Michael. All right. So my name is Taylor, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about why we should eliminate the age restriction on emergency contraception and how it can benefit us all. Emergency contraception is a pill that girls take after having unprotected sex or if their birth control fails. So how it works is that depending on what brand you get, the emergency contraception has either one pill or two pill, and it has like a larger dose of levonorgestrel, um, which helps or which stops the egg from being released from the ovary. And it's different from birth control pills because birth control pill has less levonorgestrel, so you take it every year, or once a day every year. But the emergency contraception, you just take it once or twice. Um, one pill generic such as My Way and Next Choice One Dose are not available to anyone under the age of 17 unless they have a prescription. So by eliminating, the, by eliminating the age restriction, it will help teens avoid early pregnancy, help the economy, and lower abortion rates. According to Dr. Phil, 10% of all 13-year-olds uh, uh, have, have had sexual intercourse, 50% of all teenagers have had sex before going into 10th grade, and one in five girls will become pregnant during high school. So I don't know about you guys, but up until now, I still haven't had the birds and bees talk with my parents. I don't know if that's because I'm Asian or because my parents are really strict, but yeah, so until now, I've never talked <coughs> anything personal. So if I was a 13, 16-year-old girl who just had unprotected sex and I needed the pill, the last person I'll go to is like my mom or my dad. So if for any kids who have that relationship with their parents and they can't talk to them about it, then they would need to find other ways to get the pill and it will be difficult to get it. And the, the pill, the way it works, it, it works best when you use it within 72 hours after having a protected sex. So if they get, if they don't infer, inform their parents and they don't get the prescription within 72 hours, the pill may not work. According to stayteen.org, pregnancy is the leading problem or is the leading reason why teenage girls drop out of school. Less than half of teenage mothers graduate high school, and less than 2% graduate college before the age of 30. Children, as well as the parents, are affected. According to the same website, children of young parents do worse in school compared to those born to older parents. So 50% of the kids are more likely to repeat a grade, and the daughters of teen moms are more likely to be become teen moms themselves. Son of young parents act up more, and they end up going to prison more than parent, uh, more than sons of older parents. If there are less teen mothers, it would mean less people on welfare. In 2008, teen childbearing in the U.S. cost taxpayers about 11 billion dollars, which increased the cost of health care and foster care. Childbearing teens cost U.S. taxpayers under three billion dollars in child welfare benefits a little over $2 billion in health care expenses, and according to a national campaign in California in 2008, taxpayers costs associated with children and teen mothers included $480 million for child welfare, $259 million for public welfare such as Medicaid and um, CHIP, which just stands for Children Health and, um, Insurance Program, and $344 million for increased rates of incarnation incarceration, and $424 million in lost revenue due to decreased earnings and spending. Without the age restriction, it will be able to, if everyone will be able to access the pill so they don't have to delay and it will work more efficiently. This will decrease the number of abortion nationwide. About 82% of teen pregnancies are unplanned. According to a national survey of adolescents in 2008, the majority of pregnancies to adolescent females ages 15 to 19 in the U.S., 59% of those pregnancies were live birth, 14% ended in miscarriages, and 26% ended in abortion. In 2009, a statistic showed that women between the ages of 20 to 24 obtained 33% of all abortions, and teenagers obtained 17% of all abortions. So in conclusion, banning the age restriction and all emergency contraception and making it available for everyone will not only help the one using the pill, but also the economy, and there will be less high school dropouts due to pregnancy, lower the cost that taxpayers pay for welfare, and lower the rates of abortions. Thank you.
Okay, well, when you begin, you state your claim as a policy claim and then follow it up with a factual claim. So you want to stick to the factual issues and you know leave the policy consideration for later on. I thought you gave us some good background information so that we know what the uh, the emergency contraception issue is. That was fine. Uh, there is a condition here. It says unless they have a prescription. So is there some problem with obtaining a prescription? That, I think, is something that needs to be explained. And uh, the idea that uh, kids, uh, particularly women, I guess it would be, who would be seeking this, there's also a presupposition that they would know about it, that they would be seeking it out, that they would be using it. I'm not sure why we would assume that they'd be more likely to use emergency contraception than any other kind of contraception. If they are not using contraception as it is, and that's what results in all of these particular problems, why is emergency contraception likely to make a significant difference? And that's the that's the key reasoning issue in the argument. You've made the assumption that it would make a difference for uh, the kids who have access to it as if they don't have other options uh, that are going on. The one option that you talk about that probably would be uh, significant is the abortion option, but that seems to be you know, I, I, I don't have any numbers on this, so I don't know exactly, but it seems like uh, that would probably be well after the 72-hour time limit. You know, what's the, what's the reason to believe that kids within 72 hours would know, be smart enough or know where to go or have the desire to do this, believe that they are going to be at risk? Uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to say kids are stupid, but, you know, <laughs> you know, they're apparently stupid enough to be having sex without contraception. So why are they not, you know, why are they any smarter when it comes to this other issue? That's the thing that's missing in the argument. All the stuff about uh, the problems that come from teen pregnancy, I don't think there's a lot of dispute about that. Everybody pretty much knows that teen pregnancy is problematic for the young women who give birth. It's tough on the kids and the families. It has all kinds of social consequences to it. But your argument is that giving access to kids under the age of 17 uh, to this emergency contraception is going to have a, uh, a big ding in that. And that's the thing that we, we need to have the information on, and that's the information that's largely missing from the argument. All right, thank you.